start on this computer. There we go. All right. Welcome. Glad to see y'all. I'm glad you're here. I appreciate you hanging out with me for a Wednesday afternoon on a cold, snowy day here in Idaho. Hopefully you got better weather where you're at and maybe we'll have that here in a few days. Excuse I told you me. we were... Eric, Eric right? can you give me permission to record? Everybody should have permission. I, I, uh, who's this talking? Yvonne. Yvonne. You have to go in and visually click up. Yeah, I think we still have to ask permission each time. That or you could go to the uh, participant and you could click it beside that one. Um, oh. I'm, I'm looking for the record here. It says uh, start recording low requests. Yeah, everybody has to request it. Yeah, I sent I'll you take, a request. I'll, I'll take that off so you don't have to request it and you can just go ahead and re go ahead and re and, and uh, record it. Is it working? Not yet. So I took off the, the part where it says you have to ask for it. I'm going to see. Okay, I, I am now. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, so I, I showed you this one because this is the one that I've it's got in my collection. It's just a cowboy on a bottle stopper. And so let me, let me cover the particulars right now. You got the pattern, and this pattern is relatively simple. I'm, and I'm not... I'm not doing anything that a lot of cowboy carvers haven't already done. This is this was a pattern that was given to me by Cleve. Then I found it in a book by Claude Bolton. Then I've seen it where people like Gene Zesh and Andy Anderson and several others use basically the same head. And so oh, all kinds of different sizes. Roughly, it's about two and a half from front to back, two and three quarter. Oh, yeah, no, and then side to know. side, it's about the same way, about two and a quarter, two and a half. I've got a whole lot of them up here. Not watching. All right, make sure you're you're muted unless you're in the chat. I'll watch it later. I and just so, got to kind of keep an eye to make sure nothing goes wrong. I think I just said something. Oh, shoot. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get. I'll back text to you. her if I need to. So here's where we start, and so if you take the pattern, like I said, it's about two. Let me just pull up a couple. If we just pull that up, this one is two inches wide from one side to the other, and we what we've got is I I started working on this one a couple years I don't know several years ago. It's very lightweight. But it is so pitchy that I can't I can't work on it. It it fall it kind of kind of falls apart. Here's here's one of mine. Let me pull it out of here. Right here, this one ended up being two and five eighths. I ended up making it a little bit longer, but it's roughly from the pattern. You can see how I'll do it upside down. You can see how wide it is. Come on. So we're about two inches across, roughly. Sorry, that's, yeah. We're roughly about two and a half inches. And so the same way on the side, if we look at how long that is, we're looking at about two and a half inches, long, inches wide. And then it's about four inches tall. And so feel free to size that down to the piece of wood. I know a lot of us buy two by twos because they're easier to, to manipulate and easier to work. And those are easier to, to cut whatever you need out of it. So if you need to size it down, you can you can just shrink the pattern or find it online or whatever. I've I've got this listed on my one of my one of my videos where I did the, the cowboy bust. So you have to decide on this one what kind you're gonna do. So here's a guy, real tall hat. A little bit of hair in the back, but a lot of room in the back where it's got it, it, it doesn't come down quite so deep. It allows allows the carver to I get in. That. And so here's another one that's kind of similar. And I'll pull out just a, just a one or two more here. Here's one of one of Chris Hammocks. It's a, one of those resin ones that he did. He said he probably did a million of these things over time, shipped them off to China, and they made them out of resin so but there's several decisions you'll have to make along the way do you want beard mustache or just a mouth do you not want to do a mouth and you cover it up 
Do you want to do ears or you cover it up with hair? Some several decisions you'll make along the way before you before you finish this thing. And those decisions may change. On the bottom part, what I did was bought some bought some bottle stoppers. These I bought from Statlander, S-T-A-D-T Lander Carvings.com. And they come with the little dowel that goes with it. They didn't come in there. You have to put them in there. But I can tell you from experience that if you buy the ones that are solid and you try to drill, unless you have a special tool or a special bit you use, you chew the, the bottle stopper up because it's a cork. So if you're doing it with a drill bit, the cutting edges are so far apart on a drill bit as opposed to a, say, a... I'm going to have to mute everybody. I'm sorry. I don't know how you stop from it. I don't mean to stop. I just hold it. Oh. I don't know. So anyway, you, you buy these, and the, the dowel comes with it. And so you put the dowel in, glue it in. They, these, these, these dowels have, have ridges in them, so it allows the glue to fit. I'm going to sit here at my desk and clean it a little bit because i got to listen to first because they ask me questions once in a while, and I don't want to. No, go ahead. Trying to figure out how to mute everybody. Give me a minute. All right, I'll have to edit that out later. But to make sure if you've got something to say, put it in the chat first. So that way I can get a chance to get to it. And uh, we'll we'll do the best we can to, to get where we need to go and still continue on with the class. All right, so Statlander has these, and they come in a bag of them. And you buy them in a bag, and they come separate, so you'll have to put them together. But these things are about seven eighths of an inch. Seven had one here a minute ago. They're about seven eighths of an inch across the top. So you got to make sure you're drilling that hole because if you're if you're on your base, whether you're making it a bottle stopper or a base, what you don't want is a base like this where it's too big. So it just it just rolls around in there. You want it to fit in there fairly snugly, and I think I don't have one this particular size, but you want to fit it right in there because it's not always going to be in a bottle of something unless you drink a lot faster than I do. And maybe some of you do, I don't know. But you want, to, you want a place to store that when you're not using it in a, in a bottle of something. So I usually start by drawing. And the drawing is relatively simple. It's easy for me because I've done a lot of these. I didn't draw this that way, but I'll show you now how we're going to do that. Yes, there are there are a lot of there are a lot of places. I just found these ones with uh, with uh, Statlander, but I've seen the ones with metal tubes. Thanks, Yvonne for, or Peter for putting those up there. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'll draw with a pen, and I'm going to switch to my overhead camera. Where are we at? I need to start doing this every day because I forget, I forget what I'm doing. So where is that button? So here's what we're gonna. I started one yesterday at our at our at our carving meeting out at the senior center, and uh, I had a lot of interest in people that wanted to wanted to be here, but no, I don't see any of them here. So no big deal. Here's what we're here's what we're gonna do. I want to take this head, and I want to draw on here what I need to do. All right, focus you. It's not the. All right, I usually draw the brim in. So I'm going to take this up here. I'm going to connect the top part of the brim. And then I'm going to connect the bottom part of the brim. Feel free to make this width any width you want. If you want to make it, I mean, I, I make it wider so that I can make it a big deep brim. But I, I, some of them I always, always trim them down as well. That's the first cut I make is the 
top of the brim and the bottom of the brim. What you want to do is if you got if whatever this arch is, whatever this arc right here is and here, try to make them match here. Knowing that you're going to carve one and then you're going to go over and match the other one to it, that's where I want to start. I want to start with what the hat looks like. And just like I said, with, with a hat that could be a real tall hat like that, it could be a real flat one like this one. You get to decide, this is your first choice. What kind of hat brim do you want it to look like? And then the second one is, is, is the, I'm going to draw the center line. I know a lot of you are probably advanced enough where you don't need a center line. I still do a center line to keep myself straight. So I've got a center line on the bottom. Boy, this thing is not focusing. I've got a center line on the bottom that goes the bottom, goes around this. Uh, neck piece and I'm going to use that for my drawing line so I'm going to make it match it doesn't matter and it doesn't have to be perfect please don't try to be perfect on this because if you are um, it's going to take you a long time because you're going to be you'll be like I was when I first started you have you have one of these little things here and you use them to measure is this the same length here and here and the same width from here to here um, you go with the spirit of it because otherwise it, you, you spend a lot of time measuring and redrawing and, and recutting and all that. So just uh, just do the best you can. And if you need to, all right, I'm going to go in here and I'll measure it. So there I am. I'm going to measure it. This thing is about two and a half inches wide. So that should be one and a quarter. It looks like it's about one and a quarter. So I'm going to call it close enough. It's not perfect. And I'm not trying to be perfect. There's, I don't think there's anything about me that screams perfect or would, would, would answer to the term of perfect. But you just want to make sure those lines match up all the way around. That's the first line I'm going to make. That's the center line. Make sure you got that center line as, as close as to center as you want. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to draw a center line, but now I'm going to do, I'm going to split these in half. So this one is about seven eighths, three quarter maybe. And I want to follow that line because what we're doing is we're determining how wide the brim is. So when we look at this, this is the brim here. We're trying to just determine how, or not the brim, the crown, how far back we're going to cut on the crown. So this is going to be part, this is going to be the part where the bottle stopper sits. And this is the other part right there. And so that should kind of be inside or outside of this. So if I follow that line, it's not going to come right down to that. It's going to leave a little space there. So from the cut mark that I made to cut the, the thing out, it leaves a little space there. Follow that line all the way around. Match them up. And that's going to keep you honest and straight when you go to you go to do this cowboy because that way you'll know how much of it I'm taking off right now. This part's coming off and then this other part's going to come off as well. And so if I draw that line as well, make it match up, I can, I can eyeball it. If you're an eyeball person, I can eyeball it and see that that's close enough. But you know, a caricature cowboy could have a really, really skinny head, so a skinny pointed top up here. Cleve Taylor was real good at doing those and I'm always fascinated when I see some of his stuff where they got really long pointed heads. Anyway, I'm going to mark here what part I'm going to take off because this is the first part. I like to get the head and the hat hat brim and the hat crown in there sorted out before I do anything else because that is going to determine how far how, what my face looks like because basically from here to here this is how wide it is from ear to ear. So this gives you plenty of room. And if you decide you want great big ears, add another quarter of an inch on the inside where you're moving this cut line out here. Now, if you're like other people, they're real comfortable on their bandsaw, you can cut some of this out before you go to cutting. You can trim it out. Come on. You can trim it out where you see they've cut inside here so it took out a lot of a, a big chunk of wood here and a, i didn't do it on the back and then made the top of the hat real thin and skinny i 
I almost absolutely hate running the bandsaw sometimes because I've just heard of a lot of people that had mistakes. And, and, and I see Lynn Dowdy, he puts it on a corner and he's got it towards wobbly and he cuts it out. And I'm going, whoo, I'm not, I'm not going to try that. that ain't, that's not for me. But I, but I will do occasionally some small cuts like that. Anyway, what I'm saying is that feel free to cut out what you don't need because you could come in here and cut this part out, this one and this one out on your bandsaw. I cut out these two things, but I'm not going to cut out anything under the face. I like to have a lot of room so that I can put this guy here and I can give him a flop over ear. If I cut it off too, too narrow here, I would not have enough wood for, for the ear. So when you turn it, you can see how much the ear sticks out. I like that. I like that look. And so these are floppy old cowboys with, the, with their heads and their ears. The thing about cutting out the ears is you got to realize if you're going to make this face thinner, you got to make it to where the ears don't look like they're glued on. You want to make them seem like they seamlessly go right down into the face. And part of that help is to do that with your, with your side burn there. So I'm going to take a couple minutes to draw these. I like to draw them in pencil and then I draw them back in marker so that I can see. And then I'll make marks on the things that I want to take off so that it's clear when we're doing it. We played around with the angle before the before the video started, so if this is good enough for you, let me know. I can back out, I can get closer, and I can go wider if you want. But I, I think this might be this might be good enough for what we're doing. Somebody, several somebody's emailed me and said that I was too close on a, on on videos in the past. So I want to make sure we're not too close on this, and you can see what I'm doing. Top of the hat, back of the hat. I'm making all these marks so that I can see where I'm going. And, and I like using these, these Sharpies with the real pointed tip because a lot of, a lot of these pencil marks have a tendency to get a little bit dark in terms of, be, of, of bleeding all over your, your carving. And so there's a, I've heard people talk about, well, I got to wash mine all the time. The only ones I wash are the ones that my, my students use because I don't want somebody looking at it and saying, well, whose hand has been in this thing? And, and I don't blame them. It's funny because sometimes we'll paint a project and people will get red or another color on there and they'll, they'll see red and go, oh, I don't want to use that one. Somebody bled all over it. No, if they bleed on it, I'd literally throw them away. The gloves are not that expensive and I don't want to, I don't want somebody deciding that I don't want to do this project because the only glove I got is, is, is one that's got blood on it. And you know, you almost, you almost feel like saying, well, you could go buy a glove, but, you know, I offer gloves for them so that they have something that, that they, cause you know, a lot of people will take a beginner class and I teach a lot of beginner classes. A lot of people take a beginner class just to see if it's for them. And some of them I've had, uh, some people that were, uh, had hand injuries or were elderly and had, a, had, had some arthritis starting and they, after three hours of carving, they go, yep, I love this, but I can't do it. It's just too hard for me to do that by hand. So I'll give you a couple minutes to draw that in for those of you that are carving along. Any questions so far? We're 20 minutes into it and any, any questions so far that uh, anybody wants to ask? Or comments, maybe you got a better way of doing it than I do. I'm all ears. Okay. We're gonna move on. I was moving stuff out of the way, so I've got all these heads that I cut out, and I got I got boxes of heads that I've inherited from other people. When I when I say you're you want to look at what you're doing in terms of making a decision, if you're carving, hopefully I've learned that I've got to I've got to do some preliminary work before I start. So. Here's, a, here's one old one that I did some time ago. Face is real round, but you know what? It matches. The head fits up under the hat. Not a bad eye. Didn't leave a whole lot of room for a chin. So we got to watch out for that. Got another one here that's real skinny out of a two inch piece of wood. And so I made the face real wide, which means it really looks kind of goofy on the hat. They don't really match unless you're looking at them as a, as a kind of a caricature carver. Um, here's another one. I did a small one. I think this was 
I don't even know what the year was. I didn't put a year on it, but this was earlier in my carving career. I don't do a lot of teeth. I, I don't. I don't guess there's a real reason why I don't do a lot of teeth. I, 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 I've seen them where I've cut the teeth in, or I've just made it like that. Uh, doing teeth is is. I heard somebody say one time, you shouldn't do teeth unless you're a dentist. And then that person was doing a lot of teeth. And I'm going, well, last time I checked with you, you weren't a dentist. Anyway, here's one, one done by Gene Fuller. I think Gene Fuller is one of our carving club members that's in the CCA. He's retired from carving anymore. So look at those flop over ears. For me, I, I, I like that, that style of ear. But they're, they're not easy to do because you have to plan ahead what wood you're taking off. And if you don't plan right, you don't get it right. Here's a one by Rich Weatherby. Big old schnoz on that guy. Not really much of a mouth. He cut it in pretty deep. Another you know, a couple of big ears. Look at those eyes. Those eyes are just slits. He's got a, he's got a rounded cut on the top, rounded cut on the bottom, and right in the middle he took out just a slit of wood. If you were to paint this face, all you need to do is just dab a little black paint back in there. So when I say what you're planning on doing, it's going to determine what the, what the width of your face looks like. So on this guy, I just started him. You know, his ears are on there. And so I've got to plan everything else from here on out. I've got the sideburns cut in. So everything else needs to be cut out, needs to be planned out. What are you going to do down here? You, most of us don't have a real sharp chin like that a real sharp chin out here. Just something to think about as you're carving in the next few sessions that we're doing this. What do you want this guy to look like? And what is he going to be saying? Maybe he's a bottle stopper, so he only goes on your Coke bottle. But maybe you're going to put him on a wine bottle or a beer bottle or whatever. I was looking to see if I had any of them I could put them on there. I don't, I don't have any beer bottles in here. But just start planning on what you're going to do and how you're going to do it and what it's going to look like. And know that one side doesn't always have to match the other side. For instance, if this guy had a big wad of chew on here, his face is going to be misshapen over here. It's going to be more rounded. If he's squinting this eye, it pulls the skin up here on that eye. And you have to, you have to make sure that when you squint, look what that does to, this, to, the, to these bags, what the difference is when you start to squint. You can see the difference here. Look at the wrinkles on my nose that are not over here. The wrinkles I have he here where I'm pulling them up. You got more wrinkles than you have over here. So just make sure that whatever you're doing, you're planning to leave enough room for, you probably tired of looking at my ugly mug. You're leaving enough room for what you're going to put in there. That's the key because what you don't want to do is, well, I'm going to do one eye like this, but I've already made that other eye behind it so I can't squint it. It's, I didn't leave enough wood for it. Whatever that needs to be, just remember that what you're doing on a face, and, and it's probably more crucial on a face than it is on anything else, what you're doing to one part of the face affects the other part. It doesn't make it symmetrical. It doesn't make them the exact same, but it does affect it. So if you're smiling over here, and at one eye, and I got, I got a heavy eye, Right here, the eyelid comes down over, whereas it doesn't on my other eye. So when, even when I smile, my, my, my eyes do not squint the same way. There's nothing wrong with them being different. I have so many students that look at that and say, well, they don't look the same. And I, I want to smack them in the back of the head and say, don't matter. They don't have to look the same. They just have to look like they fit in the face. Look at someone like Sarah Bearclaw and the carvings that she does. And the eyes that she does. I mean, they're, they're cartoony eyes, but she makes them fit the face, whether they're carved in or painted on. You see those kind of carvers who have been doing that for a while. They don't care about symmetri symmetry beyond a certain point. Yes, it's got to be symmetrical. I don't want one eye here and one eye up here. And I don't want the top of one ear to be up here and one to be down here. You know, so there's some symmetry you got to you got to go with. You can play around with the symmetry of the nose because he may have got his he or she may have got their nose busted. But you, there, the, here's the planning. I see a lot of people that start carving, and I'm like, what are you carving? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to do something. And then, you know, you come back a little bit later, and, and they're going, yeah, I don't know where to go because I don't know. I didn't plan it out. Anyway, let me get off my soapbox. I'll shut up now. I got, I got all my lines drawn in. That's where I want. I got lines going all the way around to show me the sides of the face 
and the top and the bottom. Okay, so here, there's another crucial point that we're going to hit here in just a little bit. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of draw it on with a pencil. Let me, let me switch cameras so you can see it rather than have to look at me too. So when I'm, when I'm carving a face, especially a cowboy, here, here is a big area where you're going to run into trouble. I couldn't tell you how many times I've got an ear up here. And then I go to the other side and the ear is down. And so I'm going to have a small face to start with because I got a great big hat and I don't have a lot of room here. I'm not going to have a Fu Manchu sticking off down here. I'm going to have a face here. So what I'm going to do is I, and I'm going to, and, and if you've never done one of these, this is a problem right here. Getting up under this brim is a monster, monster problem. And so when when I go to draw, what I want what I want to make sure I'm looking at the chat, making sure I'm not missing any important stuff. All right, thanks, Yvonne. Appreciate it. All right, what I'm going to do now, I, I don't want this thick a brim. I'm going to go more more like well, that one's not even thicker than that. More like this one. See how thin that brim is all the way around? I don't want it to be real thick. So I don't want to take more off of here. I want to take it off of here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to thin that out about a third of the way out. And now I've got a wider face. Now I've got a face. Let me get that. I don't know why that line's there. It wasn't what I was drawing on there this morning anyway. Now I got more room on the face. And so I, at this point, determine how thin you want that brim to be because it's going to give me more room to get up under the face. It's going to give me more room to stick that ear in there. And if you need to measure it, feel free to, feel free to get out your little measure boys or whatever you call them. So this is about... This doesn't have any measurements. It's just you, you go by the look. So that right there is about the same width as that right there. See, I'm shorter on this one than I am on the other one. So I've got to make sure when, when I cut these in, I cut this, I cut this one in the same amount that I cut this one in. So I think I am. That's all I was measuring from the from the from the marker line. Let me. Let me pull that in just a little bit. So you know what I'm doing. I mean, if you don't have one of these, these aren't very expensive. You can buy one for a few dollars at the dollar store or whatever, but they're relatively inexpensive. If you have to buy one of those ones that are kid ones where they're plastic, go for that. So look, look at it. Look there. So I did this in pencil to pencil. And I did the other side, pencil to pencil, marker to pencil. So now I'm matched up. So now, this is where my cut line is going to be. I'm going to redraw that so I don't lose it. My cut line is right here and right here. So that's where I'm going to start. Put this line in, put this line in. I'm going to start right there, but let me do a little bit more drawing. <clears throat> this kind of carving where, where you're, you're going for a specific look rather than just a generic face requires a few lessons in, in facial geometry. What does that look like? If you'll take and put your finger right here at the back of your ear and go straight down where that, where that jawline is, is halfway through the neck. So where the jawline is, it's halfway through the neck. So whatever you're going to do to this, and if you're going to measure it by a bottle stopper, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and put that bottle stopper there and draw the circle. So now you know whether, whether you're going to be able to fit this on here or whether the bottle stopper is going to be sticking out. In other words, am I going to have the bottle stopper half that size? Then the, then the cowboy's neck comes down. These these ones here. Where are they? If 
if you do this one see how see how the bottle stopper matches up with the neck almost perfectly you have to decide whether you want it sticking out or whether you want this sticking out or whether you want to make a match so that's something you've got to, you've got to look at the opposite is this one where it's not matched is that a bad thing i don't think so i think it's just the way it is and it'll work and nobody's going to say oh, i don't want that because the neck is too short or too long they're 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 going to find a spot to put that remember i showed you those eyes a while ago look at these eyes these are symmetrical except for the bag on one eye or the other but this is where we're headed this is what we want to do by the end of this adventure okay so i got my lines drawn so knowing that the middle of the ear is where I'm going to put the line for the for the for the bottle stopper. I'm going to look at the bottom. The bottom is about right here. I'm going to draw a line across that so I know where the middle of that is, and that line is going to go here. So that lets me know where the ear should be. So if I follow that line up right there, it should be the front of the ear. You may want to move it you may back or for, forward. It's up to you. We're going to take a little bit of this out and make that more symmetrical. So you'll have a line back here for the hair. But this is about where the ear is going to be. And if I draw in a, 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 a sideburn, I don't know what the statistical number is for cowboys who had sideburns or didn't, but ours is going to have a sideburn. And then somewhere here, I'm going to put in an ear. Ear is going to be right there. There's the top of the ear. There's the bottom. Kind of looks like we're headed that way. Except now, give me just a second. I need to remove that stuff. This extra line I have down here, I don't want. I want, I want, that, I want the top line to be showing. Because when I go to draw, if I, if I follow the wrong line because I'm focused on something else, then I'm going to have a, uh, some, some symmetry that's not even showing up. Not, aside from the fact I didn't put in there, it's not showing up. So that line is going to be the line that I'm going by for the top of the ear, whether it's flopped over or not. That's the line I'm going to follow. Okay. So now draw my lines back in. Here's my line for the front of the ear. Here's my line for the sideburns, and I'm going to draw them in long. I can, all, I can make them thicker. I can make them uh, shorter. I could even make the sideburn the whole thing. Just put the sideburn all the way over the ear where you only see part of the ear. Again, another design choice you make. He may have some hair sticking out here. He may have a sideburn come in here. And it may, some of that hair may flop over his ear. A choice you a choice you make, but anyway, there's my there's my line for the front of the ear, there's my line for the back ear, and as a rule of thumb, I generally go from the hat to the bottom of the chin about halfway down to get this line. It's not quite halfway. This one's a little bit longer than this one, but it gives me a go by line right there. And then somewhere over here, I'm gonna have eyeball and some eye, some eyebrows or whatever i'm not worried about the nose or the mouth or anything else yet but i know that's going to come in so flip over and do the same thing on this other side here's your line for your ear in front of the ear now again I, i've done them both ways but i'm finding out lately that i'm getting my measurements off and sometimes i make a mistake so i'm going to make sure at this point right here and this point are the same distance on this side of the head as they are on the other. So I'm going to go right here. I got just another millimeter there. And I'm right where I want to be right there. But I don't want it there. I want it right here. So this is where the hat's going to be, or the, the top of the face. So markers rolled away. Where'd you go? There we go. So I'm going to want this to be the same distance on both sides of the head. It's easy to get off. Let me tell you, it is very easy to be off. Because here's, the, here's that line right there. There's that one when I pivot up here. 
Now I've got the face where I need to go. A couple more things of drawing that we'll do. The hair is going to be back here. Oh, one more, one more measurement. The width of the ear. I couldn't tell you how many of them I screwed up and went, oh, throw it away because I, I got it all wrong. See how, see how wide that ear is from back to front? Just the drawing part. So when I flip that over back to front, that's right there where the top of the ear should be. So I'm going to draw that to where it's about a little more than, than half. There's my ear. And somewhere back here is going to be the hair. And my sideburn. I don't have, I, I'm just drawing sideburns in as a place marker, not, not necessarily going to be there in terms of that's where it's going to be. It may be taller, maybe shorter, maybe longer, whatever. Questions so far? All right, now we've almost got the drawing that we want, and we'll start carving here in just a few minutes. But the other thing I want to do is I want to decide what kind of brim I've got. We've all seen cowboy brims where they look. They will watch a western, and there's. And I don't think there's two cowboys in that in that, in that show or movie that that have the same hat, burn, hat hat. Whether we're talking about the brim or we're talking about the crown, all of them seem to be different. Well, before I make this decision, before I draw up here what the front of the hat's going to look like and what the back is, I'm going to take this off. I don't need this, and in fact, some of it may break off. You know how wood does. It doesn't always do what you want it to do. So what I'm going to do, and sometimes if you're like me, you make a mistake. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by taking that stuff off right there. Time to glove up. Always wear your glove. Time to wear your safety features, safety equipment. So I always got a glove. It's funny. I used to take my gloves, and because I've got a missing finger, I always used to cut off this 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 middle finger right here. So thumb, forefinger, middle finger. I used to cut that off so I didn't have all this stuff flopping around. Some, one guy came a few years back to a carving meeting. And he says, hey, I forgot my glove. Anybody got a glove? I just reached in my bag and tossed him one. <laughs> he, he had to darn no time, oh, darn no time trying to put that thing on. Uh, finally, he, he looked back and says, what's wrong with this thing? Realized the finger was gone. We, we, we were still laughing about that because I, I, I lost what I was doing. Anyway, always wear your glove. And I like to wear a extra protection on my thumb. It's what I do here. So if you can see the finger... I've got that rubber stuff that you, that you, the garden gloves, you can see it right there. I cut off the fingers on the garden gloves. There's one here and one here, and then wrap it with vet tape. So I've got the vet tape, I've got the rubber, and I've got the, the Kevlar glove. And I, I have yet to get, get cut more than just a poke by poking through it in any way, shape, or form doing it this way. So anyway, I, uh, just my tip for the day uh, it's it's free and it doesn't cost you anything for the tips uh we'll charge you for the drink or whatever all right i'm going to start carving the first thing i'm going to do is make a decision on is he going to have a floppy ear or is he going to have a regular ear because if he's going to have a floppy ear i cannot take much wood off right here although this we're going to go all this this wood we're going to go all the way into here all the way into here just like I've done here, you can see where the wood has come out and, and how, we, how we take it out. A lot of this is gone, but you've got to feather this back here so that the ear doesn't look like it's just sticking on the head. It's got to be like it was made to be there. So that's the thing we're going to do. I usually start with the biggest tool I can start with because if I can start with a big tool, I'm, re I'm removing more at any one time and I'm getting there quicker. If you're like me and you do shows or you do pretty, uh, commissioning pieces or whatever, you quote a price or you put a price on your on your carving, what you don't what that that price has to reflect what you've got into it. You can't have 30 hours into a carving that you sell for 30 bucks. You're not even recouping the cost of the wood in your time. So I what I like to do is on especially on ones like this where I've done a lot of these heads 
I can go pretty fast. I think I did this in an hour and a half. Not real fast, and I was talking while and, and helping other people at the same time. But it gives you an idea of where you're going and what you're going to do. So this guy, most of my cowboys have flop overs. I like them. Uh, they don't always work out. But if I do a flop over and it doesn't work out, I can always take it off and do a, a little bit different. So I'm going to start right here. This is going to be awkward because I'm, I'm, at, I'm out at arm's length, which is not where I normally carve. I normally carve tucked into my hand, uh, into my, my elbows tucked into my my body because of the because of the uh, torque that you're putting on there. Let me check chat for a second, see if there's anything else in there I need to address. Perfect. Blah blah blah. Yep. Good. Thanks. Thank you all for it. I love it. See, this is the community I'm talking about. Somebody puts in a question over there or gives or gives an answer like Peter says you can get them with metal tubes on them. That's great. Um, and so that kind of advice is, is really what I'm looking for in terms of building a community. I'm giving you advice on how to do this and you're giving each other advice on how you're going to do whatever you're going to do. And so that's a, that's, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I loved it when I taught school and the students helped each other rather than always asking the teacher for the answer. I never wanted to be the only person in the room with, with, with the truth. I always wanted the kids to have the opportunity to find that truth themselves because if they don't then they get in education we called it learned helplessness they learn to be helpless and somebody would come in and, and and save them that way one of the ways to keep your carving symmetrical in terms of what i do over here i do do them the same on the other side is to do it at the same time so i'm going to carve this line and i'm not going too deep because that's what what my knife is going to do and i'm just going in here with my with my this is a big file i like this file because it is heavy thick and stay sharp forever i rarely have to sharpen these unless i'm dumb and i drop it which happens way too often i knocked them all over just yesterday there's some language that happens with that situation i won't get into but uh nothing like not i, I went from where i'm sitting here Put my leg over my bag and I miscalculated and I tipped it over and all my tools, a good portion of them ended up on the table. Okay. So I've got that set in and the reason I don't cut it, I don't carve it much right now, I want to make sure that's where it is. Drawing it, you can see it one way. Carving it, you get to see it 3D. So you can see I'm not going very deep. I don't need to go very deep. I'm just trying to to make it where I want it to be. And so we're going to start up here. I said we're going to start at the head and then I went to the face. So sorry, I want to start at the, I always start here because that way I know where the face is going to be. I know how thick it's going to be. And so again, I've got my, my big V tool. And this cuts really well, even through some of this real heavy wood that we get. And then I come back in with a, with another one. It's a gouge, and I've set the, I've set the angle that I wanted it. Then I'm going to come in here with my gouge and just start taking off wood. This is where you get a chance to really take off those big chips that everybody seems to be impressed with and so i'm just coming in here and this is the hogging part this is the moving part i'm moving a lot of wood and i'm not i'm not i'm not to my line yet but i'm removing a lot of wood and so all i'm doing is just taking off a bunch of wood so that I get close to that line I want to be. And right now, I'm nowhere close. And so use whatever tool you want. One of the things I'll, I'll do every once in a while just to clear out some wood is come in here and just cut it out one way or the other. Here's where you get a chance to learn how to read grain. Grain on the wood is running straight up and down. So if I'm carving this way at the front, it's going to break off. If I'm carving back here at the back, it carves really smoothly. So I've got to know which way the grain is running so that I can get a lot of that stuff out that I don't need. But I can't go straight down here 
Because when I do that, it's hard to go and it just doesn't want to cut. So I have to come back here and cut it out. Come back and cut it out. And it's a pain in the behind because it's, it's hard on the hands, it's hard on the shoulder, it's hard on the wrists. So the best thing to do is find a comfortable tool. And this one tucks right into my hand like that. Find a comfortable tool and hog off wood. Probably can't see it with my hand in the way. Come back in here and cut it again. I'm cutting in that space where the brim meets the crown. So you get an idea of where I'm going. There's, there's no substitute for this unless you want to cut it on a bandsaw. And so if you went to a bandsaw and cut this out, you have a line that may not be straight up and down. So you end up with you end up with cutting into a piece in the back that you don't want to because on the bottom of this or on the top of this rather i may end up cutting down through here and cut out more than i want so some things just they don't there's no shortcut for them and so you just got to do them but we're getting closer to that line over and over and over and here's where the hat's going to fit in between these lines right here and here so the brim or the crown fits here to here you have to decide whether that's round at the top, pointed at the top, beat up. I love that hat that Kevin Costner wears in open range. It looks like like he does. It looks like it's been around a few things. And so it's a it's a pretty good hat. And I've done a, ca a couple carvings where I've tried to match it, but I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't get it right. I'm going to take off this part right up here because it's hard to get to. This is the front of the hat up here. And so I'm just going to carve straight in. i got to knife the biggest knife i got is this heavy two inch and so all i'm doing is trimming that front of that hat and i still have a little bit more here because i'm not i'm not not there yet all right back to the v tool the, the, the advantage of this project is you get a lot of time reading grain and you get a lot of experience trying to get where you need to go in terms of what you want it, what the outcome is going to look like versus where you start. And so we're, we're, we're close. We're getting there. We're not there yet. A few more swipes with this big gouge back here. I'm a, I'm a carver that likes to leave a little bit before I get to the final part because so, sometimes you may have a design change. You may have a, a brain idea and you decide, whoa, let's, let's try that. And then you find out that, well, it works or it doesn't. So sometimes I'll leave it a little bit proud, as we call it, a little more than I'd put on the line. But in other words, what I've got now is one side of the hat. And so the other side begins. I'm going to trim it out with my V tool. Let me show you another way to do that. I've cut that line in there. I'm going to do this from the back. And if you've got strong hands, this works. Because you're cutting to a degree, you're cutting cross grain. So this way you can get some off quicker than you can with the other tools. But you got to be careful because it's easy to crash all the way through and you break off that brim. And if you're like me, you're kind of frugal on wood. I like to save good wood and I like to keep it and I don't like to throw it away. And so I kind of hate to waste. I have plastic bins under my carving bench in the garage. And they're full of wood. 
because I don't want to throw anything away. I'm, I'm tight. I'm, I'm frugal. And so I don't, because I don't like to throw it away, I don't like to waste it either. So it comes in handy. Well, I, I put a bunch of it in a bag and I put them in a box that I carry with me to carving meetings. And I had somebody, we had a girl come in just last week. Her friend had been carving for six months and she decided she wanted to try it. So she came in and we, I had tools for her to use and I had a project. She wanted to do a trying to remember what she was doing because I wasn't working with her. I think she was working on an owl, one of Doug Linker's owls, but I don't, I don't know for sure. Anyway, it doesn't go to waste. You know, people say it's not good for firewood, but you know, it burns. It just doesn't burn as, a, as fast as pine and it doesn't burn as clean as hardwood like oak or ash or whatever. But uh, So you see how much quicker I was able to do that with a knife? I like doing it that way because that's less stress and strain on my hands. But it is harder per, per stroke. It is harder to get that, all that cut out. I have no idea what the brim is gonna look like or no idea what the crown is gonna look like. And so I'm not gonna worry about that just yet. That's what I got. I gotta take off some more wood. Make a match. At least bring them over to where the lines are that I drew in, because that's where my starting point is for that. So there we go. Okay, I now am going to take my marker and orient myself. Here's the front of the face. Here's the top of it. I always start from the middle of the, of the crown, determining what, what, what type of crown I want. I want to make sure I have the same width from here to here that I have from here to here, because if I don't, i got to adjust this. Looks like I've taken out more over here, although it doesn't look like it because this is a little bit bulge here. Anyway, starting from there, I come up. When I get to the front of the brim, right here to the front of the brim, I'll start curving that in. And while I'm doing it, it's going through my mind how many times I've done this and which one do I want to do now. What kind of brim do you want? I could go to the closet and pull out a couple of them, but I doubt that many of you would want either one of those. You kind of want your own. But anyway, I bring it in to about halfway through the middle. So I'm about halfway over to here, which means what I'm going to have is I'm going to have an upturned right here. That's going to be upturned. And then the back from that middle line, the back is going to be a little bit wider. It's not as narrow as the front. Although you see cowboys now wearing just about anything on their head. And I see some of these wear the, the flat hats and I'm just, uh, I don't know the rodeo riders so that's what I've got I've got a hat brim that I kind of like and I want to splay this out just a little bit more I'm going to bring it out here so that's wider in the back than it is in the front you can see that it, it's helpful to be able to draw and then redraw and then erase it and then redraw it again there's my hat and so if you think this was hard to do cutting out in here and here Cutting back here is going to be just as hard because right in here, now you're going against the grain. You can see the grain. I don't know if you can see it close up. Where do we see the grain on the sideways? Anyway, the grain is running this way, and so you're going to be have to having to take this stuff off by going against the grain. Grain's here, and you're going that way. So when you're carving against the grain, it's not easy. Take a minute. If you need to, go sharpen your tools if you're carving along. If not, pause the video if you're watching it at a later date. Pause the video. Take a minute to go make sure the main tools that you're going to use in the next little bit have to be sharp. Because otherwise, it's a lot more work. Just cleaning off my, my workspace here. Otherwise, it's a lot more work. And it's a lot harder on your hands if your tools are not sharp. Dull tools 
take a whole lot more work than sharp tools. And if you make a mistake and that, that wood breaks on you, dull tools leave a jagged edge that takes longer to heal. Not, not, at, not, not telling you to deliberately go and cut yourself. Please don't. That's not usually my piece of advice. Just make sure that your tools are sharp. I dropped mine another day, and that's the first thing I did was to go sharpen them. Some day, yesterday I loaned out a set. I had 10 sets of beginner tools. I loaned out a set to a brand new carver, and before I knew it, everything was on the floor. It all dumped on the floor, bless his heart. I didn't want to say nothing and yell at him, but uh, I'm hoping that, 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 that carvers will understand that that's not a good thing. All right, anyway, cleaned off a little bit. Got some stuff out of the way. Probably got more stuff up here than I need. But anyway, we're going to start. I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time shaping the hat right now. I am going to take off a few corners because that gives me a, that's, that gives me an idea of, of what I'm looking at. You also have to remember what this guy is doing. What is? I don't know about you, but I make up a story when I carve. And in fact, when I go do a show... One, a lot of times because every one of my carvings have a different look to them. In other words, they might pass for brothers, but they wouldn't be twins. And I get a lot of people that they know something about wood and they'll say, well, you know, does the wood talk to you? Well, heck yeah, it does. At least in my mind it does. I mean, it starts telling me something. So, you know, is this guy staggering home from the bar? Well, let's make him look like that. Is he ready to go to Sunday, go to meet in church? Well, let's make him look like that too. And so, if he's going to be, if I was going to put this guy on a body and the body was all dressed up and then I made his hat look a bit distressed, that's part of the picture that doesn't match. It's a story that, that has an, an aberration, a part that you don't, you don't, you don't agree with. And so I want to make sure that when I'm doing that, I, I've got the story that I'm trying to sell. Whether he's ready to go out on the range, he's on a cattle buying trip and he's, you know, need, need to buy a couple of bulls for his, for his herd, whatever that is, listen to that. So there's a story coming out of the cowboy and there's a story coming out of the wood. All I'm doing is rounding off the back. Story coming out of the wood that lets you make that story come to life. And I don't know about you, but I look at a sculpture and I wonder what it's telling me. I see some of this abstract stuff. And I, I don't want to. I don't even want to hear what it's telling me sometimes. But when I do a cowboy or I do a figure, it's telling me something. So I took a, I've taken a little bit off around the edge of the brim and the back and the front. I don't have. I'm not even close to to, to doing that yet. But I'm there. Questions so far? I've been talking for an hour and I think my throat's starting to get dry. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm not going to work on the neck because I've still got to drill that hole and make sure that fits in there. So I don't want to do that just yet. That's going to take another five minutes to go out in the garage and do that. I'll, we'll work on this. Here comes the fun part. Here's where the, we really start to take off wood. Because we're going to take off, where did my pencil go? We're going to take off a good portion of the side of the face. A lot of that's going to come off. Sorry, you can't see the X. A lot of that's going to come off here. It's going to come off here. And so we're going to have to make sure that what we're doing matches on each side. Take a drink. Yeah, I have a water bottle and I left it laying in the kitchen. So I'll go, I'll go do that in a minute. Okay, so starting with this, the, f the thing on the face that's going to stick out the farthest is the ear. When you look at the side of a head, what do you see sticking out the most? Ears. So that's what we want to, we want to leave some room for that. We want to, we want to take the room off and make it work. So right here, this line, front of the ear, under the hat, and over to the snout, the nose. That's where we're going to start cutting. We want to take a good portion of this off. Because basically, if you look at your carving from the bottom, here's the bottom part, you got a chin. For most of us, the chin 
comes to kind of a point in the, at the at the front of the face, but not necessarily. You know, if you've got a fat you got a fat face, that that's not going to be quite so pointed out here. And so we we but we've got to leave that kind of room. And so if I'm taking off all of this up here, I'm taking off a good part of this here as well. And this is the fun part because this is running with the grain, and you go to cutting, and then big old chips fly off. But before that, I've got to mark where I'm going to make my line. Here's the first deep cut I'm going to make. And again, if you're doing one with hair over here, skip this step because you don't want it hair and then a big crease or a big cut out right here and then an ear sticking out. You want those to be roughly at the same plane away from the face, same, same distance away from the face. So a lot of different ways to hog off wood. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife. It doesn't matter whether it's a big one or short one or fat one or thin one or whatever. I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to go straight down. Right there where that line is, I'm going to take my knife and go straight from the top of that line all the way down. Before you do, make sure that your marks are lined up. In other words, make sure that where you're going to cut the front of this face in is at the same place here as it is here. So if I've got this one right here, and I marked that a while ago, it should be okay. I've got this front and this front. And we remember, we, were, we measured those. I'm not going to measure them again, but I want to make sure those are about the same distance. So I can see that. They're about the same, about the same plot, because, point. Because what I want to do is make sure that the, this ear sits at the same level that the other ear is. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to make one fairly deep cut. I'm going perpendicular straight into the wood. No, you can't see that. My hand's hiding it. But I will just go fairly deep. If you're worried about it, be a little proud. In other words, my line's here. Be a little proud by moving toward the toward the front a little bit, so that way I'm still leaving more. I'm leaving more wood back here that I can eventually take off. I want to make that cut here. And I'm going to make it three times, just so I know I'm deep enough. I look like I'm in about a quarter of an inch. Okay. I'm going to make one cut right here in this groove, right at the bottom of the hat where the ear comes in. I don't want to cut the ear yet. I'm just cutting over to the sideburns, from the sideburn forward. I don't want to cut into that ear yet. Okay. So I've made this cut right here all the way down, and I've made this cut right here once. The best, the, the best tool I know to do that with the fishtail gouge. I've had this fishtail gouge for for quite some time, it is one of the most useful tools that I use because it will hog off a lot of wood. If you, I'm not, a, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not trying to sell you on tools, but if you want one of these, one of the best places to do it is buy them from Chris uh, Willock at the at the wood carving shack. They're up in Minnesota, and you can call him up and order them. We have a we have a guy here in here in Boise that carries them as well, uh, but he doesn't have many of them. Anyway, take one of these, and what I'm going to do is I'm removing this wood here. Now I'm going to make sure that I'm not slamming into that other piece of wood, because when I do that, every time I do that, I make another cut here. I don't want to do that. I want to make sure I'm not cutting into this, because this is the ear. There's not much of an ear here. It's not much wood compared to all this. So I don't want to take this off to satisfy this. I'm just going to go in here and start off shallow. If I go shallow... I don't have to order in other words I, I don't have a real I don't have a real long wide angle like this I'm going straight in and because I made that one cut it should come off just like that cut 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 like that now I'm gonna get to the point where if I keep doing that right in here I'm gonna have all these cut marks right there I don't want a lot of cut marks because I think my ear is a little small for this face. So I may end up going down a little bit more. But anyway, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to flip my fishtail gouge over so that I don't crash through the brim. I'll come back and I'll cut that off. We're going to do this a dozen or more times 
for getting all that wood out of there. But what we want to do is remove this wood at an angle. So we're removing this piece of wood right here. We're looking, we're looking at it under, underneath it. So we're underneath it right here. We're taking these things off so that the face is pointed like that. You take, if you don't believe me, take your thumbs and put them at the, at the bottom of your ear and then rotate them down so that your hands touch your nose. Your, where your finger, pointing finger is, it forms a triangle just like this. At the bottom of the ear, you'll form a triangle at the front of the nose just like that. A lot of people don't realize how many triangles there are in the face. This is one of them and it's a good spot to start removing wood because it's hard to screw this up so far. Since all of this wood is coming off, it's hard to make a mistake. So I've got that. I'm going to take my knife. See what I mean about taking off wood? You're taking off a lot of this wood because your face is rounding from back here to up here. And so if you're worried about it, follow your lines there. But basically what you want is a line that goes from the bottom of this line right here to the front of the nose. So this should be one solid, I want to I say solid because it'll curve. It curves right here. And it doesn't always come right to that point. You can leave a lot of room there because otherwise if you go really to that point, if you go all the way to here, you'll have a pointed nose. If you bring this up to here, you'll have a, a bigger nose. And if you're like me, I like a bigger nose to start with because I can always make it smaller. I can always take off more wood to make it smaller. Again, I'm just going to go back here and I'm just going to cut wood off. Don't get too crazy because you've got to follow the symmetry of what the face looks like. So I'm carving back and forth just so I can nudge up to that line. I'm taking off fairly big chip, but I'm just nudging up to that line. <coughs> Forgive me, sorry. I'm going to go in here and cut out this line for the for the the brim because that brim is going to curve. The front of it's going to curve down. It's that little sunshade that cowboys use at the front of their brim where they bend it down, and that part shades their eyes. So all I'm doing is taking this off. I'm going to come in here and make another couple cuts underneath that brim right to the front of the face two three come back in here with my fishtail gouge i turn it upside down because i have a little bit more control if i do it like this i got to get my hand in there and then my shoulders coming down and it has a tendency to to go up like this whereas if I do this it goes down into that cut so just a little bit of help for myself there I'm starting to get that face moved around but I'm still not there yet because I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this point's gonna go all the way up into the brim so I haven't done that yet so I'm gonna come in here See how we're starting to get a, kind of can't see it too much light, starting to get a eye socket or a face socket up in here. I still have a lot of this wood to go because I'm not down to my line yet. And because it's angled, it's, a, it's not straight, I can come out and then go back in and come out and go back in. But what I'm basically doing is just removing wood to give me the shape of the face. See how much we're taking off there? You start to see this line down here, which is where the, the ear is. So we're going to keep creeping up to it and creeping up to it up under here. It helps if you know what a cowboy hat looks like. If you've worn one a few times, if you've seen a few things like that, you go to a rodeo or a cowboy show or whatever, you get to see a lot of these things. And you start to see how they sit on different people's heads. So whether you're young or old, Cowboy hat sits on everybody's head a little bit differently. 
two guys, two twins, take the same two hats and they don't look they don't look the same on their heads. I don't know why there's some kind of some kind of magic happening there, but um, anyway, you're you're doing this cowboy and you're doing it the way you want. So please feel free to change the dimensions, make it thinner, fatter, whatever. We're thinning this face because right here is the edge of that face. Right here. Look how much wood we still have left to do. All of this wood out here, except for the brim, all this wood inside of this mark has to come out and then point to this part right here. So I'm going to pause for a second and get a drink. I'll be back in a 30 seconds. Hold on. Much better, I think. Muted on my end. Can anybody hear me? I didn't think I was muted. I thought I had my sound up. Yvonne, can you hear me? All right, Dave, thanks. So we're at the point now where we're getting to round that face out a little bit more. And so there's no, I mean, there's no, there's no doing for it other than do it. There's, just, there's really no, no way to, uh, to do that. All right, let me unmute you. Let you unmute yourself. And then if you have a response, there we go. Now you, sh you all should be unmuted. We could hear you. <laughs> okay. Appreciate that. So there we are starting to get there. I'm going to stop about right there on this side, just so I can make this side over here match. Main reason for that is if I get too crazy over here, it may be hard to match it over here. I'm still pretty benign, pretty simple over here. I'm on the, on his right side, my left side, and I'm okay doing that. And I'm going to come on to take a little bit of that off. So then we can start, once we get a little bit of shape to the face, we can start working on the hat. I think to me that, to me, it's always fun to work on the hat because that's when the, the personality of the cowboy comes out. Like I was saying earlier, every cowboy wears his hat differently. Take the same hat off the shelf that somebody else did. You put your own creases on, you roll it your own way. You do your thing because that's you. And I like doing mine. Just bought another one the other day. I needed, I needed one for my cowboy shows that I do, and I didn't want to feel out of place, so I bought a different one. And I kind of like it. I don't have much opportunity to wear cowboy hats very often. I can go up in the mountains and I'll wear it one sometimes for sun, but I don't uh, do a lot of cowboy stuff. So. I had a neck injury some years ago, and the doctor told me, well, if you fall off a motorcycle or a horse or have a head-on collision, you might be paralyzed the waist from the shoulders down. So I kind of kind of limit how crazy I get sometimes. Some of the stupid things I do, like fall over my shoes or stumble over my carbon bag or whatever else I'm doing. Try to limit that because I don't need to be... Paralyzed. That means somebody's got to take care of me, and that's not fair to them. Nice, David. I didn't hear you. 
David just David. went and put a cowboy hat on. Oh, there we go. That works. We all going to do that? Take a minute to go put our cowboy hats on? I'm, I'm on my way. I think we ought to. I think we ought to. Let's, let's, let's put our cowboy hats on and look like we're supposed to. I won't be seen in a cowboy hat unless I'm at a horse show. I'll only wear a baseball hat. There we go. Now we're getting in the mood. That's a nice one. I like it. Thank you. All right, switching back. I, I like it too. And I, I left you a note is how your brim of your hat goes down and it's wide. When we get to the part where you do the front brim and they meet the side brims. I really have issues on how to get a brim that goes down like that. Oh, on the front of it? Yeah, or like say if you wanted it pointed and you wanted to roll the sides up a little bit. I just, that really block. Uh, I never can get hats right because of that. You're talking about doing something like like this where it's rolled in? Yeah, exactly. And then how you join that front with the side where you can't see it. More often than not, I break off a little bit of this and I have to fix it. But you're right, Yvonne, that's that is a tough area to work in because you get to where you start pushing on it and you're 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 pushing one way and your knife is pushing back another way. And so but, it gets to where it wants to break off. But how do you get the roll in the front? I mean, I can get it to go flat down, but uh, you see a lot of these carvings, like they have like a little roll on the edge. Right. I'll, I'll do that one to this one because I've left a lot of wood here. Good. So I'll do that to this one when we get to that point. Will that help you? you very much. Okay. All right. Again, we're still just taking off a lot of wood. But I'm going to stop here on the face and go back to the hat, at least to get it started going in the right direction, because it may still talk to me and say something different and want me to do something specifically rated on this wood. But anyway, so we got both sides of the face started. We're not there yet because we got a whole lot of stuff to take off. But anyway, I want to start working on this part here. And somewhere along the way, then we'll work on the crown. But I want to take a gouge. I've got a fishtail. Or not a fishtail. I've got a, a file. And I've got a, 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 a flex cut. I basically want something that's wide enough but fits in here. And so that one is a little bit too much. It kind of looks like it fits, but I want to leave some room over here because basically I'm going to roll this over. So before I do that, what I have to do is I have to come in here and I have to physically roll that over. So starting at the back of the hat. You're kind of off screen. My off screen? Yeah. Starting at the back of the hat, I'm rolling that top so it doesn't come straight up and go over. I'm rounding it here. I'll round it on the bottom as well. But I'm just coming along that edge and rounding. Can you see this rounding over? I'm rounding that edge. See the one. See the see the left side. How how straight up and down it is. Yeah. I've rounded this one. 
Okay. So it starts by rounding that because that defines the parameters. How far can you go over? Because I can still move this side in quite a bit if I really wanted it to come to the front, to this to this point right right here. So if I really wanted that to come to this point, I could. I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm just going to round this off. And it's generally better if you go from the back to the front because it's going with the grain rather than against the grain. You're totally off screen again. <laughs> Sorry. I put yes. a little mark here so I can see it, and then it gets covered up with chips, and I can't see it, and I'm really, really getting into what I'm doing, I guess. Okay. So see where I've rounded that off? Now what I've got to do is I've got to start taking off the wood around it. I always start in the back because that's the part where it's going to break off on you quicker. So I'm going to start from the from one side of the brim of the crown to the other. And I'm just going to take off wood. It's that it's that hogging part where I'm taking off a lot of wood. And one, it's okay when it's thick like this. When it gets thinner and thinner, I can't do this because it'll break off. But I can take advantage of that right now. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm just rounding that the back of that hat off. I'm digging out some of that real thick wood in there. I'm only going to do the back right now because I have to do the sides and the brim at the or the crown at the same time. Because otherwise I won't have enough room to do it. Okay. See. Okay. Just taking off, digging out in that in that in that hole there. Now I've done so many of these, and I bet I've done zero of them the exact same way every time. So standing, so sitting here and explaining it gets a little bit hard because I do them all differently, and so I'm I'm I'm, I'm constantly thinking while I'm doing this. Okay, what's next? Well, what's next is I'm going to take the back of the back of the hat right in here. So I'm going to do, go in here, and I'm just going to round down that bottom edge. When I cut it, it leaves sharp edges. This is allowing me to round that over. And then tuck that hat back there where the ear where the hair goes. See what I'm is it, can you see what I'm doing? Yes. <laughs> Both sides. So you can see on both sides of the hat, I'm rounding over to that line that I that I separated in the in the beginning when I drew it. This is this is the width of the of the crown. So I'm wrapping this around it. Okay, I can come across here with a few licks. Don't you love that sound? So see the back of that hat coming together. I need a whole lot of more wood off of there, but I've also got to remember that I've, I've got the curls that I want to put in here on the sides too. So I don't want to take off too much and not leave room for the curls. And so I'm just going to trim a little bit more. And there's a lot of wood underneath there. It's not too hard to go through it. But you've got a lot of wood before you're in danger of going through that that bit of wood back there. Come on. Come on. Okay. Trim that back that print trim that back again. So the back of the hat. Sides of the back of the hat. So 
look like it's got a little bit of round to it. Now I know it's a lot thicker from here to here than I want, so I want to take some of this down a little bit. So I'm going to come in here with my big, my big file gouge, and I'm just going to trim that up a little bit. Because the back doesn't usually have that roll. The roll's on the front. Front third, maybe front half. And so I've carved the back up to the crown. At that point is when I'm going to start separating this out a little bit more. And so I need a thin, I need a thin, narrow. This is the, the thinnest one that I've got. It's a flex cut. I know a lot of people don't like flex cut, but I'm going to use that to start cutting in here. And what I'm going to run into problem is I have very little room right in here. So let's let's trim this down, the crown, the, the size that we want. And so a lot of mine, I like to have them, the hat like I'm wearing, it's pointed at the front. So basically it's, it's, it comes like this and then around. Marker. So the brim, the crown, and understand that the thinner that I make the crown from width to width, front to back, that determines the face. And so if this is the top of it, when I follow that line straight down, that's got to be where the, where the, the, this has to be where the forehead comes out. This has to be where the back of the head is. So I can, this, the same, same way here. This has to be where the side of the head comes in. This too. So now I'm worrying about four or five different things at the same time. And so now I'm going to work on this. This is one of the hardest parts of the carving is right here because this, this is grain coming straight up. And so when you go, when you carve back, that's the way you have to carve it. Cause if you carve down, you can, it's just harder. When you go down, it splits. It doesn't want to cut. You got to come back here and cut and split and cut and split. I, and I hate doing that. So what I end up doing is I end up carving up right here, kind of rounded. You're kind of kind of doing a scooping motion to try to creep over to that line that you made. See how I'm creeping over this line? And I've got to make sure that hat doesn't get too thin though, because then it looks like you know. Remember seeing any of those Abbott and Costello movies? Well, they had a really, really tiny head on a, or a tiny hat on a big old head. So what we're doing right there, see how we're rounding that, that hat. So I'm going to give this one a kind of a point up here. I'm going to take a scoop out of the sides and I'm going to try to keep the top fairly flat. I don't want it to be real tall. And so I'm going to start right there. Scoot over to the edge, the middle, the middle line right here. Scooting over to that. Both sides. What I do to one side, I'm going to try to remember to do the other side. So you can see kind of where I'm going. All right. The thing gets hot. I got to take it off. Come in and trim a little bit because I've got a lot of room here. So I want to trim a little bit of this here. Big gouge. I'm going to come right up the side and angle it right toward the front. Both sides. Roughly the same cuts to both sides. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this right now. Because I want to get the brim going in the right direction. We're at 135. So 
So kind of headed in the right direction. That also, when I do that, I'm going to come in here with my smaller one that I pulled out, wherever I put it. Don't you hate that when you get out a tool and you can't find it? There it is, right there in front of me, right in front of me. I want to come along the bottom of that crown and shape that space. This baby needs some sharpening, so let's find another one. That'll work. I'm coming in right where the brim and the and the and the crown meet, and I'm just gonna gonna separate it. Same way in the back. I'm going to take a little bit out between the brim and the crown in the back so that I give myself a little bit of room on the sides to go in and start relieving that wood. So you can see where I've got a groove here and a groove here to separate the crown from the brim. I'm just going to keep doing that just a little bit more. Okay, does that make sense what I've done so far? Yep. Okay, I want this to be narrower. And so I'm going to go back to my big one, and I'm just going to take a few swipes off the side of it. Come on now. work a little bit on there. What I want to do is I want to come in with a narrow gouge. This is one of those um, stew buys. It's not going to focus on enough to see, is it? Anyway, it's a small gouge. <laughs> and I just want to start relieving it. So starting from the back and working to the front, I'm going to undercut once I get to a certain point, I'm undercutting that edge. Can you see that, Yvonne? I'm coming in here and undercutting because that brim should start curling up down on me. That's the hardest part for me. Well, you got to realize it's over. It's it's uh, you're going through the end grain. Because the grain runs straight up and down here, and so now that's the hardest. I, I will admit it takes a lot of Hooker either better. a lot of a lot of work or a lot of hand strength. If your if your hands are really strong, you can do it quickly, but you get a little bit crazy sometimes, and it gets a little bit out of whack. So I'm I'm creeping up to the brim, and I'm creeping up to the crown. Just making it, making that that part of it round uh, deeper. I don't think there's a good angle to see that. Turn it a little bit more. So I'm going up under this a little bit more, and I have to be careful because I still got a lot of carving on this on this hat and the head. And if I make it too thin, too early, I'm going to squeeze it somewhere where I'm trying to do something, and it's going to break off. So I've got to be a little careful on what I'm doing. 
and this I, I love big tools this is best done with a smaller tool so I, I don't know this is number 11 about I want to say it's not even a quarter yep it is a number 11 one quarter so whatever whatever manufacturer you use look for that measurement whichever one you buy I'm saying I keep going back and forth I'm with afraid, tools. Uh, I keep going yes. back and forth with tools because I'm not I find out that okay I got it out with the big tool then I come back with the little tool and then I can't get it with that when I come back with the big tool I'm still real thick on that and I don't want to be that thick back there but it, it is easy to break off because that grain is running right up against it see I'm thinning a little bit and then moving to another spot then thinning a little bit and moving to another spot it is just there's no easy way to get to it I know I know you get some people like Lynn Dowdy who does it in three pieces and you get other people that do it in two I like the head and the hat together because to me it gives it a lot more strength now this cut that we keep doing is going all the way to the front of the hat and this is really thick from here to here so I've got to be careful because otherwise it's going to be really wide and then curl in and so it, it may not look right when we do it that way but we'll try to sneak up on it cut out a big piece like that come back with a small one undercut it. You see how deeper, I don't know if you can see how deep that groove is getting now. But I'm not up to the front of the face yet either. It just takes a strokes after stroke after stroke in, in time. What I don't like is my brims to be too curly, um, too big and curly. I guess I, I look at I was looking at a book at the bookstore yesterday, and um, what I saw was very few curled up brims. Uh, I think I think that's a fairly recent part of a hat. The Cowboys wanted it wide to give them plenty of sunshade, and the, the more you curled it up, the less sunshade you got. So, at least as far as I can tell. So not only are we curling the inside of the brim, We've got to trim the outside of the brim because that's really thick right here. So we've got to bring that down and roll it to the inside as well. It doesn't come down the bottom there and then have a real sharp edge. So we got to remember that we're going to we're going to spend some time getting there too. So I do a, a few cuts with the small one and I come in with the big one. It allows me to pull it all together. So it's not it's not just a little cut out here on the outside, but it's a cut right, roll to cut. I'm trying to get the whole roll in there like that. If I can get that in there like that, then I can give it a good a good curl there, and then come back with the little one and add the details in that curl. That's where Eric, I go undercutting. Yeah, Eric. Um, there's different brims for different. Things like the bull riders have a different brim they use. The barrel racers use a different brim shape. Yeah. Uh, showmanship horse is a different shape. So you can kind of see what a person does if you know your brims, kind of. That's true. Yeah, I'm not that. I'm not that. We have a lot of rodeos here in Idaho, 
and anymore with some of the weird stuff that comes on TV when I'm flipping channels, if I see a rodeo, I'll stop and watch it because it's got to be better than some sitcom that doesn't doesn't address me. But you're right. I I see. I did a show last year, and there was a barrel. Uh, they had to, they had a corner section for uh, people selling stuff for barrel racers, and uh, they asked me to be at, an, at another show called "So You Think You're a Cowgirl." And I thought, okay, I'll put some stuff together for that. And they really they really liked that, so they invited me to their show. But you're right. When they see the like a lot of the a lot of the rodeo girls, the rodeo queens, even down to four or five years old. They come in and you know their hat says rodeo queen. It doesn't say bull rider. So it's it's one of those things that you, you're right. The more time you spend in it, the more you realize, oh, that one's a that one's a bull rider, a bronc rider, or a, a buster, or whatever. So yeah, Thank but you. I'm talking about the the brim shape. You know, yeah. like in showmanship, it's really curled real tight up to the head almost, and a barrel racers are kind of really wide and out with a little flare on the yeah. anyway yeah no I, I know what you're talking about i've seen it i just didn't i don't know i don't know enough to know which one which ones they are they all are cool thanks all right so i'm 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 discontinuing to work that to work that brim one way or the other whether i go back and forth between the big one or then i come in with the little one it's just a matter of do a little bit, come back a little bit more. A lot like if you if you've ever done uh, portraits or if you've ever carved landscapes, you know that there's a lot of undercutting and or underpainting to get where you want to go before you can start adding the final details. And so I'm spending a lot, I'm spending a lot of time on this hat, but I'm slowly getting where I need to go, even if I. <laughs> I'm off screen again. I apologize. But all I'm doing is I'm just doing the same thing I've been doing for the last 15 minutes. I'm, I'm undercutting this brim to make it roll. It'll show when we get to the front. We're not at the front yet, but it'll show when we get there. So. So I've come up to the front of the of the brim on both sides and now it makes that hat a little bit taller look a little bit taller than when the wood was here so you can see a little bit more so now we're going to start creeping our way up to here and the, the one of the things that i like to do first is 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 round this part right here because this part you know, i want i want it to come up like this and come back down marker 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 i want it to come up a little bit and come back down. That is going to be the most fragile part because this is coming down like this and that's going to want to break off right there. Sorry if you're looking at it upside down. This part right here, which is the front curl of the brim. And so to get there, I've got to undercut a little bit here. So I'm going to come, I'm upside down. I got my, my carving upside down. And I'm going to come in here where that line is that I just drew. And I'm going to round that just a little bit. Give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a round. Cut off that part right there by the hat. And so what I'm going to do, eventually I'm going to come up here and I'm going to undercut that with a fishtail. But right now I just want to kind of shape it to that point. So I'm coming up here to either, either the right and left side of the front of the brim. And I'm just taking that, that harsh edge off right there. And if you're afraid of breaking it off because it wants to break off right there, you can come in with a big gouge. This is an OCT. This is a big gouge, and I can put that right in there, right where I want the curl to be, and carve right into the head. See how that gave that a little bit of a, a little bit of a scoop there? I'm going to do it two or three times. I'm trying to get that that roll to the front of the hat. You can see a little bit of it there. Let's see that roll right there. That's where I'm aiming with that. 
and I've got to trim off some of this. I'm going to come in and take off some of the front. I don't need much off. I've got to take a little bit off so that I can bring the front together. And so I'm cutting it over more towards that line that I originally started with. And I'm, I'm nudging myself that way. I'm creeping up to it. So that's where we want to start next. We're going to start right in here. And I'm just going to come in here with that big gouge. And I'm going to carve back. Oh, here, before I'm carving this way, now I want to carve that way. So I don't want to, I'm not trying to take off a big bite on this one. I'm just nudging it around in between the lines that I drew. In between these lines right here, I'm taking off wood because I want to scoop that out. And I got to be careful. This is in grain. It is hard in grain. And so I have a friend of mine that used to do them when he was carving. He hadn't passed away. He used to come in here and do this with a with a Dremel for him because it was just too hard on his on his hands. And so he would he would get a for him with the right profile to fit right in there. Come in here and scoop it out. And then when he got done shaping it, he come in with the tools with the carving tools and add the add the knife marks. And the, the reality is nobody knew that unless he told them. Because it wasn't, oh, I, I have to carve with a knife. It's, I want to carve and get this thing finished. And so if I use a Dremel or I use a Fordham, that's okay. So I realized that you couldn't turn this loose on a beginner. We'll offer a class like this in our club, and then we'll get a whole lot of beginners that want to do it because they want to carve cowboys not realizing that there's very little success they find out with that because there's just so much to learn along the way. All right, you saw me get started on this. You've seen where we're headed. Feel free to carve more if you want to. I am going to, we'll call this one good for today and end here in just a few minutes. Any questions I can answer up to this point? Comments, complaints, concerns? Did you get mine already or did I miss it about your your uh, fishtail gouge? I didn't check chat. Hang on just a second. Okay. So what brand is your fishtail gouge? All right. Good question. I have a Drake. I have a file, or not a file, uh, uh, Stubai, and I have um, what is it called? Flex cut. So I have three of them, and then I have smaller ones. I've got a small, a real small file. It's not I use, I use not that one. This one. I use this well, one occasionally. How okay. wide are they? So this flex cut one is right about seven eighths. The file one is a number three, and it is about a three quarter. The Drake one, and this is probably the oldest tool I still have and use. The Drake one's about, I want to say, five eighths. And then this file is a number, says number seven, and I don't think that's right, but it's close enough. That's about a quarter of an inch. Okay, what, what constitutes the fishtail versus any other? So the, the numbers on tools relate to what they do. And so the odd numbers, the one, a one is a flat chisel. So you go buy a flat chisel to, to do uh, mill work or whatever. Eric. That'll be a number one. Eric. Yo. Uh, Doug Linker has a very good uh, video on tool numbers. Yep, that's true. He's got a really good video where he shows the different sizes and he jabs them into the wood so you see the cut it makes. But basically, it comes down to the number. So a number one is a flat chisel. 
you rarely ever see a number two because there's not a whole lot sorry not a whole lot of difference between a one and a two so a three has has a very slight curve to it this one here is a three see how light how how small that curve is and so they go then to a five then to a seven and the seven turns uh, I have a seven out here this says this one's a seven but it's not a seven is is relatively flat but not then you get a nine which is a, a almost 180 degree curve and then you get a number 11 do I have an 11 yeah I got a number 11 where it's a curve curves 100 curves 180 degrees and then it has sides that come up so on the ears they come up a little bit higher than a seven does sorry that, sorry that you can't see that very well no that's okay and so when we talk about then you talk about other numbers and the other numbers like a two for what relate to a v tool but those aren't used anymore they're used for the angle and the size so if it's a 45 degree angle and it's a quarter inch that's a different size than a 45 degree that's a half inch and so the odd numbers one three five seven nine eleven uh, are related to how much they curve so how much of a curve this tool does tells you what it is come your number seven laying to your right your OCC. yeah, yeah. Um, this one this is a great big seven see how little of a curve that has doesn't have much. How wide is it on that one? I think that one's an inch. Okay. That's, it looks that's about all. an inch. I don't, I, I doubt that you, okay. OCC went out of business. They sold out to ACT. You can still find them. They're just rare. So, um. Well, I found one that's, um, the regular, but I was looking for a stubby and, I ordered one, and of course, it was not right. <laughs> it had it only had like a maybe an eighth of an inch cutting to cutting area on it. I mean, it's like it wouldn't even hardly go through my wood. So, right. I've been working love, on it. I loved it when OCC made tools because they made a four inch and a five inch. So the five, four yeah. inch handle was about that long. And this this five or six handle is much longer. So I got small hands. So when I'm carving, you can see how much of this th stuff is hanging out the end. Well, I don't is need there, that. Is there free end there that you can cut off? Yes. The the problem okay. is on 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 most of these tools, one. they don't tell you how long the tang is. Yeah. And if you cut it off, you cut off the manufacturer's name, which you know I don't. Yeah. I don't think that's worth anything. But you got to worry about how far the tang is, and so most of them have about a three inch tang which you're talking somewhere about right there. But yeah. some of them have longer ones. You can see them out the, out the bottom end. Most of wow. them don't. And so most of these tools only go in about an inch and a half to two inches. And that's all they need because you're not, you're, not, you're not banging on them with a, with a mallet and you're not putting a lot of torque on them because they're palm tools. So they, they work. But, yeah, you could. I, I, I had one that one time from OCC that was just way too long, and I cut the end of it off. And I used it for a long time, and then somebody borrowed it. A, a brand new person borrowed it at a carving night, and she left before I could get it back. And I have and never seen her back in the last couple of years. So he liked it. I liked it. It was a good one. I made it fit me. So mm -hmm. hey, Tommy. Yes. I got an OCC uh, fish tail, and I got it not too long ago, but it was like from, you know, you just have to look on the websites, you know, some of them had it in stock. It's a four inch handle with a, and it's a number three, and it's one inch wide, the <coughs> blade. And then I also got another one from Drake, a number two. What I, what I messed up on is I've got the three, five, and nine, and I just got those as Steve Brown had them at the Renegade. Yeah. And then it's like they sell it. I'm like, oh, I got to get a seven. <laughs> oh, I like, know it. What? Well, that's what, yeah. There's, there, I, from what I understand, there's not a whole lot of difference between a seven and a nine. Nine curls more. So between a five and a seven, you got just slight more curl to a seven. So it's I got this seven thing, because yeah. I wanted a small one. I wanted a narrow one, the one that wasn't too far, too too long or too uh, too big across. So this is a this is a file number number five number seven. Yeah, it's just I, one I of use things. it. Um, Eric, I get a couple of of those that were longer handles, and I cut those down to my 
hand size on yeah. the uh, uh, on the craft uh, tools. One thing I found is that uh, wood crafters tools, the one that they sponsor as their tools, they're made by file. Flash cut? And no. The, the ones that they sell that are wood crafter tools, all they say is Swiss made. Right. And they're made by file for woodcraft. I have a couple of those in my other, and I'm, I've been doing a lot of bark carving and chip carving. I've got a, I got a bunch of those in my box. I just, I see Swiss made and I just, doesn't have a name on it other than that. So yeah, yeah. that's what it is. I, I went into depth about that and there, and it takes a while to get them because they're ordering from file and file doesn't operate all year round. Oh, really? I did not um, know that. Yeah. They're made by file for wood crafters. Gotcha. I've been getting a lot of questions from people about beaver craft. I'd, I'd love to hear any of your opinions about it. Um, well, we got, we've got the knives for our beginners and they love it, but it's, it's just a typical base you know, beginner knife. You got to yeah. sharpen it all the time. Yeah, I have I have heard them say anything about it, so I don't know. Right. Uh, Eric, that's Beavercraft. Beavercraft? How are they, they to work with? Sharp. Are they? Do they stay sharp? They stay sharp, yes. I see. I did a, they sent me a packet and asked me to do a review of, of it, and it, it came with a rhinoceros shaped piece of wood the tool and and i'll be honest with you, they had to during this whole time keeping it sharp i'd make two strokes through the wood and it start leaving marks and i i know how to sharpen i'm i sharpen tools for a lot of people and been doing it for a long time i could that's not what i'm having trouble with sharpening yeah the same problem you're talking about you sharpen it then you you start getting scratches yeah well the wood they sent was not basswood either it was sugar pine and yeah, so if you know sugar pine at all, it has all these little pits of, of pitch all the way through it, pine sap, and it scratches the tool up. So I tried I tried using their tool on something else, and it just would not stay sharp. So I did that. It's, it's funny. Gene, Gene Messer, if you know him, Gene Messer did one, and then probably about a month later, they sent me the packet and asked if I would do it. And Gene and I basically said the same thing. It, it wasn't real good for us. Um, but I hope they figure it out because, you know, we need more tool manufacturers and you want to support the Ukrainians, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy their stuff right now. Well, Just one, my one beaver craft gouge I bought broke shortly mm. after. I used you know, and everybody says, well, they'll replace it. Well, now you're down and you got to send it all the way to Ukraine. What does that cost? And they just send it all the way back or ask them to replace it. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I hear a lot of people that are, where their brakes breaks quickly. Other questions? Thank nope. you. Thank you. Two weeks Thank from today would be the twentieth, so we'll uh, we'll do a little bit more. Not sure how long it'll take us to do this, but you, you get an idea of how how much goes into just carving just the head of something. And I've got. I've got boxes of them. One of these days, I'm gonna put them all on on busts or something like that. Let me talk quickly about busts before we before we split. Ordinarily, Cleve does them like this. Cleve and and Claude Bolton and several others. There are people that just mount them just as displays, the hole in them. Um, there's some where you have the body cut out, just just the bust part of it. And then of course the one that we're doing, we're gonna do it as a bottle stopper. And so whatever kind of whatever whatever you use as a holder for your for your bottle stopper, um, whatever that is, I think that's I don't know I don't even know what size of hole that is, but I don't I don't buy the ones that, that aren't already pre-cut because I hate cutting cork. I've been told you can take a piece of a copper pipe and sharpen it and twist it down through there, but um, if I can buy them already sharpened, that's one one step I don't have to do. Here you there. Just selfish, I guess. Lazy. I don't know what it is. Eric. Yeah. I can't see what that is, Peter. Hang on. Let me pin you. Oh, yeah. I just put them on a, on a uh, cut off so bottle. bottleneck. Yeah. 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 Cool. 
Lynn, Lynn shows you how to do that. He he, he puts a string on it. You did it that way? Gotcha. Yeah. So Lynn and puts a string on it, light fluid lights it, and then right. uh, and then hits it with a lighter and and then snaps it in cold water. Yeah, I've seen him where he do the, the glass cutter as well. So there are probably a bunch I of different ways to do that. All yeah, right. Good seeing y'all. See you next time. Stay Thank safe. You. See you in a couple of weeks. Have a little fun. Invite right. your friends. Invite your friends and bring them along. And I'll have this loaded up. As I don't know when I'll load it up. I'm working. I've gone back to doing student teaching or um, substitute teaching again because I gotta gotta pay a few bills. So um, it's kind of fun to work with kids again. But it, it's a lot. It's a busy day. I'm. I stand up the whole the whole day okay. and. I get right. to sit down at the end of the day, and by then I don't, I don't want to do anything. I just want to come home and relax. So I'll, I'll do it as soon as I can. Thanks again. Yes, thank, thank you. Good seeing y'all. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. You're still on. Huh? You're still on. I'm still oh, on. I didn't know if anybody had a private question they wanted to ask. No, we saw you yawning. I didn't hear you. We saw you yawning. Oh yeah. I got I came down with a sore throat a few days ago and it just it's just lingering and I can't seem to get rid of it. So okay. it's uh you get up and clear your throat, take a throat lozenge, water down in the middle of the night, so you're up four or five times a night and it just gets to you uh rinse with salt water yeah i've tried that before too oh, okay. my wife has got an ear uh, eye infection so she's uh she's she's having issues so both of us are kind of kind of on the lamb right now it'll get better though it always does okay bye see you peter <laughs> any other questions out there no, just bye. Thank you. Sorry I talked so much. <laughs>